Empire. Preparation is key, especially in a pandemic. And that's what these coaches have basically expressed and vocalized to us. It's like, hey, you know, we might not get new uniforms this year, but I'm not going to get rid of my score break access because I need to cut. I can't play unless I can cut film and review scouts and prep for games and, and pull everyone into a film room. That's Wes Sims, co-founder and COO of Scorebreak, who's looking to redefine the film room for the modern coach and their team. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. Wes Sims and his director of investor relations and marketing, Rob Carlin, know they're onto something here. Getting the game plan together in these days, keeping a team engaged virtually, are all a potential edge for a savvy coach. And with their company score break, they believe they have found a far superior hamster wheel. Our guests this week are Wes Sims, the co-founder and COO, and Rob Carlin, the director of media and investor relations with Scorebreak, which is a reliable private film review software for competitive teams and organizations that will give them instant, simple game film breakdown. Hey, guys, how are you? Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us, Graham. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, Wes, tell me, uh, you know, you're not the first to do this uh, of what I've described that Scorebreak does. What did you see in the marketplace that made you want to build Scorebreak and, and what solution are you trying to answer? So there's there's three really important parts to kind of the, the coaching side uh, and scout film side of athletics, right? So Huddle did a great job of solving the first and primary one of those, which was the film exchange piece. And taking care of that situation where, you know, it used to be a couple of coaches were meeting in a dark parking lot at 11 o'clock on a Thursday night, exchanging DVDs or VHS tapes, put it all on the internet and made that stuff accessible. So the first piece is film. The second is statistics. And then the, the third, which is where we're kind of headed now, is into the instantaneous sideline replay piece. Uh, there are a couple of players in the market that are doing each of those things. Some, some are doing it well. Uh, but score break, what kind of caught my eye and blew me away really was the fact that it was all packed into one app, one product, uh, and super easy to use. Because the other thing about coaching and somebody who's coaching himself, a time is like your biggest enemy. And so being able to kind of jump into one platform, not having to cobble together all of these different systems, wait for uploads and downloads and carry hard drives and do all of the old school things basically buys you back the most important asset you have as a coach, which is time, and gives you that time to, you know, coach up your players, prepare for the next game, uh, review past games. And so that, that to me, the ease of use and basically the accessibility piece was huge. And that's, that's what I love about it. Is this powered by AI? How does it compile all of the data that it's taking in? So still using kind of the old school method of somebody stat, taking stats uh, in game. And the reason that we do that is, frankly, to this date, humans are still a little bit more reliable than, than AI. I think the AI machine learning piece is definitely coming down the pipe. Uh, we're experimenting with it. Other companies are experimenting with it. And I think just for the in-game review piece, you really need to rely on accuracy. If, if our big selling point is the ability to grab an iPad off of the bench and hold it up during a timeout and replay an event, a statistical event that just happened that you want to coach the kids up on, then that stat's got to be right. And we don't want to rely on a computer or AI or ML, especially in some of the advanced statting, um, to get that wrong and basically make it tougher for the coach on the sideline in that instance. So it's, it's coming. And it, one more, then Rob, I'll bring you in in a moment. Um, in terms of capturing the data, are you supplying the cameras? to do so or how are you working around capturing all of this that can be turned around yep 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 so we do supply cameras we do install cameras in indoor and outdoor facilities that's another big big space and a big growth opportunity for the business but by and large most programs uh most teams have at least one camera uh they've been using for years uh some have upgraded to some of the newer stuff obviously 
and they're camera ready. And so what we're doing is making it easy to ingest that film into score break. And then we have a patented technology that essentially takes camera footage, film footage from multiple cameras, multiple angles, and synchronizes it with the statistics. So the really cool piece is, is the football program, you know, at a Virginia high school or the lacrosse program at a Maryland high school that's been using, had somebody on a, on a video squad that's been filming their games for years. Um, they can still use that footage. That person can still film with that camera and upload it into store break. The beauty is the minute it's uploaded, even if somebody's taking stats on an iPad across the field uh, at a different time, those stats are going to align perfectly with that game film and give you the ability to run back those clips uh, in, in real time or later. And so, yeah, it's pretty much bring what you got. And we have the platform and the app that's going to pull all of that together and help you make sense of it in a way that saves you time and gives you the power to kind of coach the team. And Rob, how did you get involved with Scorebreak? So Wes and I live in the same neighborhood, and Wes had told me about it. We were playing tennis, um, trying to stay in somewhat of shape other than round. And um, we were playing, and he told me about it, and he showed it to me quickly. You know, Bram, you and I have been around sports and been around these different things of game film. And I said, ah, I've seen this. Like, I, I, I don't know what is going to separate this from anything else. And he was like, all right. And a couple of weeks later, he had sort of – so the, the CEO and founder, Jordan Hendry, and Wes go back together, you know, a number of years. And, and, and Jordan's been working on it for a while. And Wes kind of told him – you're not ready yet. You know, you're, you're not going to hire someone like me yet. You, you don't have no, enough of a, of a product. And let's, let's talk in a year or so and we'll see where I am. And then Wes professionally had gotten to a point where he was kind of looking to move on from his company and really thinking about score break. And he's like, Rob, before I do this, I want you to look at it again and just see what this could do. So we were literally sitting on a bench by the tennis courts in our neighborhood and he started to show it to me. And I was like, First off, this looks like iMovie. It like it graphically, it's like really sharp looking. It looks nice. And then he started showing me how what he just described, where you could take a highlight, click it, export it, and send it. And he texted me a, a video of a game, and I was like, "Oh my god, you could share it that easily?" He's like, "Yes." And now all of a sudden, both of us were like, "I think this is something. I don't know what it is, but this is something." And every time, I, you know, we, he lives r literally right across the street from the tennis court. So uh, he's like, come, come back to my house. Let me show you a little bit more. And he showed me more. And I just said, this is crazy. This is like, and I said this to him right then. And I still believe it almost two months later. I said, this is one of those things where you hear other people talk about that they got in on the ground floor of something amazing that's not being done anywhere else. And then, then all of a sudden it took off. And you're always like, how come I can't be a part of it? This is that once in a lifetime piece of technology. And we got on a call with Jordan and Jordan started showing me more of the capabilities of what this could do. And I was literally texting Wes, which he then shared on our Slack channel now, once period, in period, a uh, period, lifetime period. I was like, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. And at that point, both of us just like dove right into the deep end and we laugh now because we don't know what the word no is. Every coach that sees this is completely blown away. So they might say, I'm in a huddle contract, but as soon as I can get out, I'm coming aboard. Or screw it, I'll go to my, you know, the parents and raise money somehow. We got to get in. This is so much better than what we're using. So um, I got into it. it, it we kind of laugh sometimes because it feels like 10 years ago. It's literally been less than two months. but it, consumed every minute of our lives and um it's really exciting to be a part of it right now. Wes has there been any friction with the pandemic in trying to grow um the customer base based on one shutdown of sports two budgets are different right now um how have you guys navigated the marketplace through the pandemic yeah that's a, that's a great question it's definitely a weird time and, I, and I'll also kind of come back to something Rob touched on and just to clarify when I first saw the product, uh, Jordan had it at the premier lacrosse league level, right? And so it wasn't that the product wasn't ready. The market really wasn't ready yet for that product. 
And so Jordan had kind of pulled away on this in stealth mode for like four or five years and gotten it to a point where it was like full of invested. Uh, it was just a matter of figuring out like how to address the market. And then COVID came along and upended sports entirely, right? You had entire seasons get canceled. And so, you know, Jordan built this business that had like 2X, 3X year over year growth over the past few years. And then the pandemic comes along and you would expect that everything would change. And I will say that like programs definitely pulled, uh, tightened up the purse, purse strings a little bit um, and started to reevaluate their budgets. Schools are obviously financially strapped, especially at the college level, uh, especially state schools because states are basically bailing everybody out from the pandemic side. But that said, Jordan still managed to pull off like a 2X growth last year and has kept this thing profitable. And I think what it, speaks to is the fact that like when you see something that you need, you find a way to make it work. And that's what these coaches have basically expressed and vocalized to us is like, hey, you know, we might not get new uniforms this year, but I'm not going to get rid of my score break access because I need to cut. I can't play unless I can cut film and review scout and prep for games and, and pull everyone into a film room. Now, the other piece of that is pandemic has kind of kicked everybody out of the film room. And so one of the features inside of store break that's phenomenal and amazing and, and coming down the pike here in the next month or so is essentially the combination of Zoom and a remote film session through score break. And so coaches now have been adapting their film sessions by essentially trying to run film through Zoom. And it's super choppy. Like even when we do demos through Zoom, Zoom doesn't do the best job of, of, of displaying running film, right? We know that. It's a bandwidth issue and a platform issue. We've basically taken that, thrown it into score break and added the ability to pull in your team, see faces, interact with each other, have conversation with a perfect video feed. And the ability to telestrate, highlight, add notes, clip, clips. And so we've definitely responded to the COVID and the pandemic piece. Um, but I think the sports... I, we keep hearing about things like V-shaped recovery, right? I think sports is going to be one of those things that helps us come back to normal. And so the teams that we're talking to now versus six months ago are really excited about the future and kind of gearing up and tooling up for, for next season. And so it's been, it's been bumpy, but it's been way better than we could have expected. And I think that just speaks to the product. And just to build off that brand real quickly, I mean, look, you do have to you, – you change your price point. You let them know that we're going to work with you and we have what we call our COVID relief program. And, you know, we want to make it, we're lucky enough that we're still a small enough company that we have some wiggle room, you know, to allow, we, we need to worry about our marketplace right now. We want to make sure we get that footprint. So we're working with teams in every way possible uh, to let them know that we want you to join the score break family and, uh, and they see that we're working with them. So, you know, we all adjust and adapt in every way possible to make this work for teams because last year was canceled and this year games probably will be canceled. So we're going to work with, with clients as they come aboard. Great point. Support for the following passion comes from Lexus, celebrating the obsessions that drive us to go all in. From enthusiasts of all different spaces. I'm Matty Mo. I'm living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I'm a conceptual artist. My obsession in life that I go all in on is inspiring people to see the world differently. I realize that if I truly want to make an impact in the world, I would have to use art to tell meaningful stories. Maddie's work is designed to challenge viewers. I like pushing folks out of their comfort zones, encouraging them to chase their dreams, and helping them get there. Passion is what drives Maddie to continue creating. Without passion, you cannot become obsessed. And without obsession, you can't push past the ordinary limits of possibility. Don't be afraid to fail. At Lexus, they've gone all in on their passion, designing a pure sports sedan, the new Lexus IS. Designed to look as thrilling as it is to drive. Learn more at Lexus.com slash IS. Support for this podcast comes from Progressive. What would you do with an extra $800? Buy a plane ticket? Pay down your student loan? Treat yourself to those shoes you've been eyeing. With Progressive, you could find out. Drivers who switch and save, save an average of $796 on car insurance. 
Get your quote online at Progressive.com and see how much you could be saving. National average annual car insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2019. Rob, and you'd referenced this earlier, Rob, you like, like may have been professional broadcaster for the majority of your career. Most recently, you were with NBC Sports Washington uh, covering the Washington Capitals doing the pre and post game and other duties, obviously, alongside there. So you've had a long experience with this. Um, I've wondered with these technologies, and I wonder since you're working with one directly now, because um, it's rare that someone who does like what we do works with these technologies directly. Do you see an application for broadcasters where this could be applied? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we have what's called our federation page where we put together, uh, if you're throwing a big event or we work with the um, NBA Youth Academy. Um, and we're able to create a completely interactive um, stats page. So meaning you could literally uh, open up a box score from a game, click on the player's name, and you could then access any play. You could hit his three pointers. You could, and it'll automatically jump to that highlight. So imagine now going on a website, not just seeing the two or three, um, you know, pre-picked highlights from, you know, the Caps game last night that you could then see, but there were other plays that you wanted to see back. How frustrating is that sometimes? And you're like, how can I not be able to find this play? Like it was such a big play in the game, but really any station, my old station included, it's just going to put out the OB highlight, right? Like th- there's only so many people working and they're going to try and pretty up, you know, their content and put their, yeah, it's it just, I want to see the play I want to see. That's how we live now. We want to see what we want to see. So imagine going to an interactive box score and being able to click on any play you want. You know, Tom Wilson, big hit. I want to click on that. Um, And so parents now can go, you know, when we first got into this, we had a, there was a big lacrosse tournament in Florida and we went down and created a federation page for them. And parents can now, rather than sitting through a, you know, an hour and a half game that you, that's being presented. And then you got to remember like, Oh my God, my kid scored at like the five Oh five mark or something somewhere around there. You know, eventually you remember it and I got to fast forward it and watch it and then rewind it and fast forward it. And to get to those points, you can literally just click on your daughter's name. That's what parents were able to do. Coaches were able to do. So imagine you're a coach and you're recruiting a kid in high school and you can literally just go and click on the kid's name. Um, and see all the plays, and depending on how in depth you're you're tagging it, you can see good plays, you can see bad plays, um, and see how the kid re- responds to it. So I think you know I, I've thought about reaching out, um, and and Bram, you know when you get into rights, especially on the internet, uh, leagues own those, and it, you know they're very buttoned up about what you can and can't put on the internet right now. But I, I think there's a huge opportunity for leagues to use our platform and make it such a better experience for the fans. And that is the thing they all talk about is the fan experience and the interactive use of it. And I think this is going to be the answer to all of those concerns. And I, and I think it's going to, it's so easy that fans are going to love it. Wes, where are you on the potential for curated content outside of the primary use, which is with teams internally? Yeah, so it's a great question. Rob made some great points. And I think that, you know, ultimately it does come down to a rights conversation. Uh, I think as long as you stay in the amateur side, right, high school and below, um, generally speaking, unless you're like St. Francis football, uh, you're probably, you probably don't have a lot of folks angling for your, your content rights. Um, that said, I think there are content opportunities at the NCA level. It just gets a little bit stickier. but yeah, Rob hit the nail on the head. The ability to curate the content as a fan is powerful, but also think about it from the player perspective or from the team perspective. So players can also uh, or obviously have access to score break. So if I'm a player and I had a at this game last night, there was a guy who had three or four monster dunks. If that kid were on score break, he can basically access his game film cut those clips, literally download them to yeah. his phone from the bus ride from the game back to his school, 
and could be tweeting them, putting them in a gram story, doing whatever he wants with those clips and basically telling his sports story. The other piece is that at the NCA level, there is, from my understanding, limited understanding anyway, and you guys would be better positioned to weigh in on this, you know, you can flip, you just can't really rebroadcast. And so you've got these SIDs at the NCAA level that are basically grabbing highlights to put on the Twitter feed for the team, right? And so a goal happens. What does this SID have to do today? They have to find the camera, they have to get the card, they have to get, import the card or export the film from the card, import it into a device, then they've got to kind of probably manipulate it, cut it, clip it. And then 10, 15, 20 minutes later, hey, that goal finally shows up on Twitter under the, you know, team feed. This SID now holding a, a phone or an iPad can rip that clip down the minute it happens and have it up on the Twitter feed in 30 seconds. And so those pieces are just from the clip standpoint, but also cutting entire film, uh, you have that same ability. And so I think that you can create both an interactive experience as the game goes on. We broadcast a DU Air Force game uh, last week and we had the interactive box score. We had the scrubber, the timeline that we call it at the bottom that allows you to kind of move forward and back, fast forward and rewind as quickly as you want, jump to spot. And so folks were able to watch that game and literally click on the box score. So if that goal happened that was highlight worthy and you liked it, you could go back and watch it three or four times mm. and then just get right caught right back up. It's all really cool. Wes Sims, the co-founder, COO, Rob Carlin, director of media and investor relations with Scorebreak. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, Bram. Thanks. On the next Future Sport podcast, a legend on the bike is lending his name and gaming expertise to an esports brand. Gaming has always been a creative outlet and a creative expression for me. You know, I grew up riding bicycles as well, but wasn't like when I wasn't on my bicycle or wasn't in school or stuff like that. Um, I would definitely game just to just, just like it became a, another outlet. One of the best BMX riders on earth, Nigel Sylvester, will join Greg Selko, CEO of XSET Gaming, to discuss the future of esports integrated into the culture. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3Advance, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3Advance.com. That's the number 3Advance.com.